A little over six years ago, Honda satisfied our craving for a little piece of forbidden fruit known as the Civic Type R. Now, the 2017 Type R was a huge hit. Enthusiasts fell in love, dealers were gorging themselves on insane markups, and a lot of people were worried that Honda would ruin the Type R when they announced that a second generation was coming. Well, today we're actually out here at Sonoma Raceway in Napa, California to finally drive the all new FL5 Type R. It's got more power under the hood, it's got a new look on the outside that is far more mature versus the prior generation, and the interior is just much better in terms of the tech department. So if you guys are in the market for a hot hatch, the big question I want answered, is the Civic Type R still the king? Stay tuned to find out. Now this is a Civic Type R, so I figured I'd show you guys the goods, and that's the goods that are under the hood because this is what makes the Type R special in the Civic lineup. We have an updated version of the K20 C1 turbocharged direct injection VTEC turbo engine. Now, Typically, you could find a variation of this engine in the Accord, but Honda just announced they're killing the Accord 2.0-liter turbo. So if you want a Honda badge vehicle, this is the only way that you can get this 2.0-liter turbo, which the power outputs have been updated this year uh, to 315 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. That's an increase of about nine horsepower. It essentially matches the outp output of the current Mark 8 generation Volkswagen Golf R, which is a beautiful thing. And Honda says the turbo has been redesigned. It's now putting out 23.3 PSI of boost pressure. That's almost uh, an extra pound versus the previous generation. Fuel economy is rated at 22 in the city, 28 on the highway. Type R's remain front wheel drive, which they come with a mechanical limited slip differential. You also have that dual axis McPherson strut suspension, which helps to mitigate the torque steer. We'll talk about that when we get this vehicle out on the road. And you can still take your pick of just one transmission, a save the manual only six speed uh, with active rev matching, which Honda again has improved this year. It shifts like butter. So we'll talk about that later on. Honda doesn't quote a zero to 60 performance Performance, but we brought, we brought our equipment with us. We'll see what we can actually get out on the road. This vehicle does have a top speed of around 170 miles an hour, which is actually pretty fast, but this car can really handle those high speeds. It's built for stuff like that. And the Type R is the heaviest Civic, but still, as this one sits, it weighs in at just over 3,100 pounds. So it's about 200 pounds heavier versus the regular hatchback. But let's go ahead and close up the hood. Which, by the way, the hood is aluminum and it also has a functional heat extractor. It's a unique hood to the Type R. And when you look at this new FL5 generation, some of you have been quick to point out or criticize that it looks boring. It looks like an Accord with a hood scoop. And some of you may be right. However, I applaud Honda for making this styling a lot more mature because the previous generation almost looked like rice from the factory. It had way too much in terms of styling details. Now you can see Honda has taken the beautiful, more conservative lines of the 11th generation Civic and it works well in the Type R. You can see this one here is in the hero color and championship white. You have some black accents with these really large grill openings. You can see the functional um, intercooler behind this actual grill here, which Honda had some issues with the first generation Type R with cooling. They've sa they said they fixed that for this new generation. There's a big Type R badge there in the grill. And then you have their full LED headlights, standard LED low and high beams, LED turn signals. Honda did remove the fog lights. You can see below the headlight in the lower front bumper, that's actually just a design piece. That's actually not a functional vent. Uh, but you can see, I like the lower front splitter where it's black piano black accented. It just looks really well with this vehicle's championship white. Now from this angle, you can also really see just how much wider the new Type R is. It's 74.4 inches wide, which means this is about three and a half inches wider than a regular Civic. And it's all again in the bodywork to allow us to fit those fat 19 inch wheels, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But overall, let me know what you think about the styling of this vehicle. I love the lines, and I think people that are complaining, they, they complained about the first Type R, this one here is probably going to be universally loved for the styling. Now, looking around the side profile, uh, this vehicle is around 180.9 inches long. So it's shorter, obviously, versus the Civic Si sedan by about three inches, but this is about eight inches longer than something like the Volkswagen Golf R and the GR Corolla. So the Type R is a bigger vehicle, and that's really gonna translate that into the interior space, which I'll talk about in just a moment, but looking at the Wheels, you can see Type R's actually went down to a 19 inch wheel this year. Uh, now Honda did that because they wanted, they said it's better for handling and ride quality, which I agree. Uh, it's got a new matte black finish here 
uh, for this 19 inch wheel with the five spoke design. There's also an accessory uh, HPD wheel that actually will reduce the unsprung weight by about five pounds. If you guys go for that lighter weight wheel, it's a forged wheel. And then this model here has an optional Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tire. That's right, it's our compound tire. That's actually gonna be a, 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 an option that you can get from the dealership for those of you plan to track this car. All the other ones will come with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, which for me, they're one of the best tires in the business. Type R's also have upgraded brakes, nearly 14 inches in diameter in the front, 12 in the rear, and you have a four piston uh, Brembo style caliper, uh, or Brembo caliper in the front, which again, serious stopping power, all necessary for a Civic Type R. Now looking at the rest of the bodywork here, you can see the fenders all flared out to make room for those 265 width tires. Uh, again, the tires are 20 millimeters wider than before. You have a functional vent over there right by the wheel, which helps with the aerodynamics. And then you also have a black painted side mirror here, integrated turn signals, uh, nice black window trim, and then no sunroof. Civic Type R still don't offer a sunroof. I kind of wish they would offer it, even though it's gonna make the weight or add weight to the roof. But I think for people who buy a car like this, they're gonna drive on the road, it should be a good option that they should add. You can see the black splitter here along the side skirt looks pretty nice. And then unlike the previous generation, the door here is actually unique on the Type R because the old one had the same door, but it had this kind of indent here where they didn't flare out the door. They've, again, you can see fixed that where the body work is just a lot more clean. It's a lot smoother. It's a lot better integrated. It's less boy racer. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I love this new FL5 generation. Now looking at the rear, you can see the Civic, the Civic hatchback lines are carried over very nicely here. And I also love the new spoiler that they've put. This is again, a functional wing that does add downforce when you guys are out on the track. Um, you can also get this wing in carbon fiber if you'd like. Uh, they offer that as a Honda performance accessory from the dealership. And then the rest of the look back here, you can see you've got an incandescent design for the turn signal and the reverse lights, but the tail light and brake light looks like an LED design. It's a really nice look. I like this kind of piece that connects the tail lights together. You have the signature red Type R logo or emblem and then the Type R logo over here. And then down here, you can see, unlike the previous generation where you had all these fake vents, they've gone with a much more uh, slimmer, low profile, fake black accented vent here. This really aggressive rear diffuser and then the exhaust system. You can see it still has the signature triple exhaust. Honda says it's now an active exhaust, um, but let's go ahead and fire it up so you can hear how it sounds from the back right here. So the exhaust certainly sounds better, and I also noticed that the center pipe is now the largest, but it's still no Hyundai Elantra N, so I wish Honda had added some crackles and pops to that exhaust. But looking at the cargo area, you can see this is still just a hatchback, which I love. And then in terms of the space, it's pretty much the same as the regular hatch. You get just under 25 cubic feet of space back here, which is plentiful. You also have this really cool cargo cover that you can kind of extend and move from either side. Uh, and then underneath here, you can see there is no spare tire, just a fix-a-flat kit with an air compressor, and there's a little bit of storage under there. If you fold down these seats, Honda didn't disclose how much space it is when you fold down the seats, but the old generation had around 47 cubic feet, which I imagine this one should be pretty similar. So let's go ahead and check out the interior of the all-new Civic Type R. And just like when I first saw this vehicle out in LA a few months ago, seeing it in person again, the new generation Civic basically has an interior that feels a lot more premium. There's a lot better technology as I get in and shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk and that's also a new chime that I haven't heard uh, before in some other Hondas. And then you can see the fully digital 10.2 inch display shows a little Civic graphic. And then when you wanna start the vehicle up, you can see here is the key fob. All Type R's come standard with Honda's Intelligent Access key. It has a red Honda logo there to show you that you've got the special Type R. Now, when you wanna start it up, Put the clutch in, make sure it's in neutral. The engine starts right up. It doesn't have much of a sound when you initially start the vehicle up. This is actually kind of a cold start. This one's been sitting in here for a little bit, uh, but 
Uh, it actually just sounds kind of like an ordinary Civic. We'll talk about the sound later on uh, when we get this vehicle out to drive, but Honda claims that it has an active exhaust. It also has a sound enhancer in the interior. But in terms of the tech, you can see, if you guys have been in the current generation Civic, this is pretty similar. We have the nine inch fully digital touchscreen over here, which includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see my phone has already wirelessly connected to that. It looks fantastic. I like how there's a volume knob there, along with tuning buttons, a home button over there, and a back button. And then the fully digital 10.2 inch cluster that you typically would find out of a Civic Touring or Sport Touring. You can see when you start messing with the drive modes, it actually changes the color of the display. You can see here in individual, you can also adjust the way that looks. This is actually the same display that you get in plus R mode, which you can see it gives you the tack at the very top. Uh, it shows you all your necessary information for when you are track driving, like the oil temperature, coolant temperature, boost pressure, all that other stuff. So that all looks great. I think Honda did a great job, especially from the previous generation, which had a digital display that was kind of half-assed, if I'm being honest. Uh, but overall, this is much nicer. In terms of the materials, you can see the dashboard has a, or the door panel here is a soft touch injection molded plastic. I do like, look at this guys. It's got a digit or a fully, or it's got a lit up ambient light strip there that's red, which is kind of cool. I don't think every other, any other Civic has that. The window switches, you can see one touch up down for the two front windows, but the rear windows are not one touch. It's all power windows, of course. You have pretty high quality switches here. Um, you have no power folding mirrors, but you have power mirrors, whatnot. The steering wheel you can see is slightly unique to the Type R. It's got leather wraps, uh, red stitching. It has a really nice nine and three grip. I'm surprised though that they got rid of the flat bottom steering design. I really like the flat bottom steering design, but you can see this is also nice. You also have Honda Sensing standard on every Type R. That's something that Honda didn't include on the first gen or at least the FK8 when it first came out in the US, they added it in 2020. If there's one thing I'm also gonna knock about this car, it's the horn. It sounds terrible. It just sounds super puny. So I imagine owners are probably gonna wanna switch that out immediately uh, when they wanna actually buy this vehicle. But we can see the steering wheel has a manual tilt telescoping design and it has a pretty good amount of adjustability and range. Now over here on the dashboard, you can see soft touch injection molded plastic, which is nice. You have that really cool metal covering over the vents you can see the vents also have that satisfying click. You can see Type R there has the little placard, which I like how Honda moved it from here to the dash. And you can see this one is number 00271. Um, so Honda didn't disclose how many they're gonna build, but again, it, all it adds to the whole special feeling of this car. And then all Type Rs come with the 12 speaker Bose premium stereo system, which uh, sounds pretty good. It's nice that Honda's finally going with an actual premium stereo maker as opposed to just their Honda premium, which is never all that premium. But putting the vehicle in traverse, you can see there's the backup camera. It's got trajectory, it's got uh, distance markers. Um, it has rear cross traffic alert, but no parking sensors. But you can see here, there are also a few different views. No 360 camera. You don't typically find that in a Type R. They also included a wireless phone charging pad here, which you can see my iPhone 12 or iPhone 14 Pro Max fits nicely. You have two USB-A charging ports. There is some aluminum trim here. This is actually genuine aluminum. It feels cold to the touch. And it also, I'm glad that Honda's not doing a piano black plastic. You can see your drive mode selector is here where you can switch out the drive modes between individual comfort sport. And then there's all our plus mode as well. Uh, I like how it's right here. It also has really nice high quality buttons or uh, there's an electronic parking brake over here. And then the shifter, typical Honda, it's like butter. It just glides through the gates. It's a really short throw, reverses all the way to the right and then down. Uh, and this is, again, one of the best shifters ever. There are a bunch of accessories that Honda offers, like a different shift knob. Uh, you can also get an Alcantara wheel. And then these seats, you can see these are the Type R specific seats, which have an Alcantara material, which they're just totally red for this new generation. I also like how you have the five point holes right there if you guys wanna put a racing seat belt. These are, uh, have been redesigned, Honda says, uh, and they are just more comfortable, more supportive. We spent about two hours in this vehicle today and I wasn't complaining at all. It's really good seats. I also love the red carpet that you get in this car. Uh, I wasn't expecting Honda to do that, but you can see it just adds to the whole visual pop in here, which is nice. If there's a couple features that are missing that I wish Honda would add, heated seats. They don't offer heated seats uh, for the Type R here in America and no sunroof. Now, of course, that's probably a personal preference. Um, sunroof is gonna add weight at the roof of the vehicle. So if you're planning to track the car all the time, you won't want it. But again, most people daily drive these, so you're gonna probably want uh, a feature like that. It'd be nice if Honda offered a feature like that. And over here, center console, you can see you've got your uh, two cup holders. You have storage cubby here with a nice padded armrest. Open this up, you can see it's a little bit on the small side. There's no uh, power outlets in there. They're all over here. But overall, the front seat area is certainly nice. And I like how the, I, I like the premium features. I also like all the red. It goes well with the championship white, but let me go ahead and hop into the back seat really quick. 
because the back seat of the Type R, you can see, kind of gets the shaft compared to the front, because just like the previous generation, Honda is not carrying over the red Alcantara into the back seats. You can see it's got a cheaper feeling cloth material. It does have a little bit of red stitching, uh, and then all Type R's continue to only be a four-seater. There's technically no middle seat here, and they put cup holders here. There's no armrest that folds down, so that's something to keep in mind if you really needed that fifth seat. I like how the red carpet is carried over into the back, and you also get the red seat belt, so that's going to add like another five more horsepower. Just kidding. Uh, but you got around 37 and a half inches of legroom back here, which is fine. There is a, a tunnel here or a hump that intrudes on this area, but with no seat here, it doesn't really matter. No storage pockets, but I like how the seats are kind of sculpted. It's not kind of getting in the way at least, but materials back here, it's hard touch plastic. There's no USB charging ports, no rear seat air vents. So it's a little Spartan back here, but it is roomy enough to be able to carry average size adults like myself. All right, so here we are in the brand new, fully redesigned 2023 Civic Type R. And Rob's probably been super excited for this one. You've probably been waiting all year, haven't you, Rob? Yeah, it's been on the calendar. I've been looking at it. I've been looking at the car. Yeah, so if you guys have known, like, <laughs> followed Rob, he bought one of these back in 2017 when they first came out. He had it for four years, just sold it this year. He misses the car, but... Oh, yeah, I miss, yeah, I miss yeah. the hell out of it. I just didn't get to drive it as much as I wanted to. Right, so this is kind of like a kid in a candy store for him today, so... Uh, <laughs> making me regret my sale, but maybe not if I can put a point yeah. down on a new one. Uh, yeah, you'll, you'll probably get one of these again, or maybe the Integra Type S whenever that one decides to come out. But uh, regardless, this is our first time behind the wheel. We're going to be driving this vehicle out at Sonoma Raceway later on in a track. So we're going to see what we can do 0-60 to 60 wise in this car first. Now, Honda doesn't quote a 0-60 to 60 time uh, for this vehicle. It's Remember, it's still front wheel drive. It's got a 315 horsepower, 2 liter turbo engine. Uh, six-speed manual transmission, but let's go ahead and see what we can get here. All right, so it will hit 60 in second gear, and uh, first run, Rob, we got 5.65 seconds, which... You can do better. I, I, you. I could do better. Maybe I'll let you drive later, and we'll see if you can do better. Uh, just because you're prob you're a little bit better at shifting than me, you know the Type R's capability a little bit better. But I have to say, in that first run, 5.65 is very impressive, considering the fact that this car is still front-wheel drive. It only comes with a manual, and I've got my incredibly fat editor next to me, who's adding so much weight to the car. But I think it could probably do a low five-second range if you if you get the launch right and you have just one person in the vehicle and you know how to shift properly. I'm a sh I'm a decent shifter. Uh, but I have to say, this car launched extremely well considering it is a front-wheel drive vehicle. I did turn the traction control down. I have it in plus R mode, so that kind of helps with the whole uh, the traction not cutting up the power too much. Uh, but I have to say, the Type R was always one of the best handling vehicles for me, and this one follows in that footsteps. The steering feel is among the best. The In R plus mode, it's so heavy, direct, full of feel, and you guys might be hearing a grown from the driver's seat. I don't know why it's doing that, but we're going to chalk it down to an early pre-production model, right, Rob? Yes, chip shortage. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll be sure to ask Honda why is the seat rattle and creak as I go over bumps, but this is my, that is my driver's seat doing race that. Car. Yes, it's a race car. It's very, it is very stiff in this mode. In this mode, I feel like I'm driving something that belongs on a track, and that's a good thing because you want it to feel that way, but put your foot down in third here, the pull this thing has. 23.3 pounds of boost, sticky Michelin Pilot Super, or Sport 4S tires, and this car is just relentless. It makes you feel like a hero on a back road, and compared to the current generation Volkswagen Golf R, which I kind of had as the benchmark for a while, this feels in the same league. I, I'd have to drive the two cars back to back, but I will say that the Type R feels a little more like a hero car. It feels even more like a scalpel on this back road here. <laughs> Sadly, we didn't get a chance to drive the GR Corolla on a road like this. Toyota's program just didn't have a back road for us to sample it on. But man, you you got to admire Honda for their strengths. I mean, they have set the lap record, I believe, at Suzuka for a front wheel drive. Suzuka Raceway for a front wheel drive hot hatch like this. And it feels like this car is built for attacking a back road like this. Now, the one thing I want to mention really quick is the sound of this engine. I saw in the press release that there is a sound enhancer in this vehicle. Honda also has an updated exhaust system because that was a criticism from me and so many other people, the old Type R, including Rob, that sounded like a vacuum cleaner. Uh, 
But what do you think of the sound, Rob? Well, we were talking earlier about it, and I was like, it actually sounds better. I didn't realize that it had the sound uh, enhancement until you mentioned it. And right. You're right. In Plus R, it does, you, it's louder, but it doesn't sound fake. It sounds like it's a legitimate intake noise from the engine. Exhaust, not so much still, but yes. when we were setting up for that 0 to 60, a car drove by, they shifted, I probably a 2 to 3 shift, and you heard. Yep. Uh, well, something's happening up there. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> it's all good. We're still good. <laughs> you, you heard it wasn't quite. It was a, a little bit of a pop. It was a little bit of a. It was something. It sounded. It sounded like something, which is more than my old Type R. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The sound is an improvement. Does it sound better than the crackles and pops from the Elantra N or the Golf R? No. But I, I will say that it sounds better than the GR Corolla, from what I can remember. Uh, I was actually kind of disappointed with the three-cylinder noise of the GR Corolla. But uh, it's a good point that you bring up with the sound enhancer you don't notice it's there because the sound sounds um it doesn't sound fake it sounds right. authentic right. and i think that's what's important it doesn't matter if it's an enhancer for me it just has to sound good and i think that uh the intake noise when you put your foot down does it, sound it good it builds on the natural sounds the car has yeah it, it doesn't try to create some new kind of weird thing that makes it sound it builds on the actual sound the engine's making yeah, no, I think I think that a lot of people are going to be happy with the way this thing sounds. Um, obviously, the aftermarket is going to still do something with the exhaust. But uh, right out of the box, I think that Honda has made huge improvements. I also love the shifter. The six-speed has the active rev matching, which they've improved this year. It also makes a nice beeping noise when I get closer to that red line. <laughs> it really buries your head in the seat. <laughs> that is impressive. I mean, we've driven a lot of fast cars, but... The fact that the Type R can hold its own and put a smile on your face like this. <laughs> I don't think I have driven a press car where we both smiling for a while. Yeah, this is this is this is really good. This is fantastic. And and I'm still going back, like, should have Honda put all-wheel drive in this car? In this situation, no. I think it's perfectly capable with just front wheel drive. I mean obviously if you want all-wheel drive for the traction, you're gonna want it. Like if you live in a cold weather state, but Obviously, out here in Northern California, it's just not needed. But uh, we're gonna go out on the track later. We're gonna get to see if we can get some track footage. Rob also is gonna get behind the wheel. Maybe we we'll get some footage of him driving and see what he thinks. But uh, yeah, first impressions out on the back road like this, a mountain road. This car is just sublime. Well, Sofian had a, the pleasure of going through some super super twisty mountain roads, and now we are on a not at all super straight road, which is not what a Type R is really for, right? It'll, it, we'll find some curves <laughs> later, but this, Rob wants, Rob knows he can beat my 0-60 times, so I let's see. I don't know, I mean, you know. <laughs> he usually I, can, so we'll see. Look, I've been get. driving a Tesla for the last, uh, <laughs> you have, year and a half, <laughs> and, uh, you know, gotten lazy, driving stick, all that sort of stuff, or not driving stick. Fine. Regardless, I mean, we know the car is not designed for 0-60. to 60. The car is designed as a track weapon, which you've already proven that is seems like pretty capable we're gonna have fun later on in the constant yeah way, we I think. are but still it's a good reference point because the quickest time we got in a golf r manual was 5.2 so that's yeah. kind of the number to beat 5.2 huh well like you said there's two of us one slightly heavier than the other one oh yes but okay <laughs> we'll see what happens here let's see the truck up there is turning i think we have plenty of time let's see what happens shall we There we go, Rob. What is that number? 5.19. <laughs> 5 <laughs> Excellent, Rob. Yep, uh, very good. Good wow, job, Rob. Okay, that's actually impressive. <laughs> that is a very impressive time because uh. the old Type R, the quickest time we would see was like 4.9. And that was like on a prep surface, like a pro driver. Like it was never consistently that number. But this car, my quickest run was actually 5.38. We got right. that off camera. So that was your very first one. That was too. my very first run, actually. So that run that you guys saw, 5.6, was slightly slower. Kind of surprised me, but very impressive, Rob. And that's with us in the car. All right, so Rob got 5.19 seconds, which he's pretty pleased with. We caught it. We tried another few runs, and it was in the mid five second range. So we'll just go ahead and take that as our quickest run. But let's go ahead and uh, get on this twisty road here because I want to ask Rob what he thinks of the new Type R's steering, suspension, shifter, engine compared to the old FK8 model. 
It's a good question, and I will say again that I mean, it's been a year and a half since I've been behind the wheel. Of, eh, not a year and a half. It's been a year. It's and, been a little under a year, I feel. You said you sold it at the beginning of this year. I, yeah, you're right. You know what? It's true. God, it feels like a lot longer I think than it was that. in February. I guess it's because I missed the car yes. so much. I do miss the car, and that speaks volumes already because, you know, I love that car. I absolutely, you, you know, you helped me get it. Mm -hmm. Find one that I didn't have to pay 15000 over MSRP for, which right. is ridiculous. But this car feels like every single thing about my old Type R has been enhanced either slightly or a lot. Okay. I mean, you I know you're a huge fan of this Civic as far as the interior goes, uh, save squeaky seats. <laughs> <laughs> Nor that. <laughs> right? Um, oh, hello. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's the same basis to be to be starting from. It's a wonderful interior. It feels a lot more premium. It's a good place to spend time in. It's comfortable. Um, like you said, I think you mentioned earlier, the visibility is better. The eight pillars are much smaller. Yes. Um, the hood fits the car better. It's not quite as bulbous. Um, it feels feel like, less like a van. It feels, oh yeah, this <laughs> this complete, this, this feels like a sports sedan, whereas mine, you know, it never felt like a minivan, but it yeah. could look like it from certain angles. Right, <laughs> it just felt big. <laughs> it, it did kind of feel big, and, and this car is bigger, but it doesn't feel like it. It absolutely yeah. shrinks on these roads. Now, right. right now, obviously, we're on very, very narrow back roads covered with, uh, debris. you know, debris from the rainfall that's been happening here, so you yeah, can't we, really- we bring the rain to California all the time. Every, but, you know, <laughs> hey, we got lucky on this one, so. But um, I mentioned the sound earlier. You talked about the sound also, yep. and I think it, I think it does sound better. It still doesn't sound good as an Elantra, and yep. it still doesn't sound good. I don't know. You said that the the GR Corolla you thought this sounded better. I think the GR Corolla it was louder, but this does sound better still. I agree. Yeah. Um, but. It's funny, on the highway earlier, we were in plus R mode going along, and I didn't think the steering felt heavy enough, but here on this road, we're only, in, we're, we're only in sport, and it feels perfect, so yep. if we were in plus R, it would feel yep. even better, yep. I'm sure. You're getting an arm workout. Yep. <laughs> the powertrain is amazing. Now, my, my Type R, I had some modifications done to it. It was putting uh, north of 400 horsepower, oh, yes. but honestly, I don't feel that gap. This feels, honestly, in third gear, it felt amazing. It really felt like it could keep pulling, pulling, pulling. Right. That's why, you know, you said that I was happy with a 5.19, and I'm happy with it, but I, I don't know. Rob still thinks he can get it under five. I yeah. think I can. We'll see, we'll see if there's an opportunity One later. Day. We're definitely not going to do that when we're on a back road behind a truck filled with porta potties. Yeah, that's <laughs> But overall, you think it's an improvement over your old one? Um, anything about it that you think went, they went backwards? Well, I know a lot of people are complaining that the styling is is a little bit subdued, but that's what everybody complained about. So what do you expect Honda right. to do, you know? <laughs> and I think, you know, look at all their design language right now. You know, everything is a little bit more subdued, and I think it works really well. I mean, seeing the car in person, you can pass judgment if you want in pictures, and I get it. It does look a little more calm, which is okay for some people, but seeing it in person, you saw my face when we walked out to oh, the yeah. lineup this morning. We oh, walked yeah. out, there was 20 of them lined up, sun was just coming up, water was glistening. They were glistening. all championship uh -huh. too. and I was just like, oh man, that is that it looked <laughs> today. Sharp. You just basically said today's gonna be a good day. Today is gonna be today's <laughs> been a good day, yeah. Alright, so out on the street, the type bar was absolutely an amazing machine. But now we are back at Sonoma Raceway in another type bar. I've kicked Rob out as you guys can see, and this type bar is running on Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 R compound tires. Uh, it's basically a race car tire for the street. You can get these tires from the dealer as an accessory. And I've been on this track a few times, but let me tell you guys, the Type R was built for tracks. And this car just makes you feel like a hero. All of the stuff that I loved about the driving on the road is amplified here out on the track. The, the steering is just a precision tool. It has so much feedback, so much heft to it. The engine is so flexible and so linear in its power delivery it has torque everywhere and the suspension just stays so incredibly flat i'm going around these corners here i'm in r plus stability control is on but the traction is in the lighter mode but uh my god the whole car as a package is just so incredibly fun i'm just shocked the seats also hold me in place really well they really just hold you nicely but they're not uncomfortable out on the street this is probably one of the best factory sports seats that I've I've been in so far. Overall, you can basically get this car off of the showroom floor, take it to a track like this with just an R compound tire. <laughs> and the brakes. This car has upgraded nearly 14 inch size rotors 
four piston calipers. <laughs> There's a little bit of rotation there. I love that. <laughs> But there's so much torque. Third gear is so flexible. I can basically leave it in third the entire time on this track. And it just eats up the eats up this track in third. It's amazing. Now I had a chance to drive the GR Corolla on a track as well. Not this track specifically, but the Type R feels, oh look at that, listen to that. You can feel the back getting a little bit, it steps out a tad, but it's just so controllable. <laughs> I love the shift lights and the beeper noise. <laughs> oh my God, this car just, you could just beat on this thing all day long at a track. I am shocked. I am genuinely shocked. The old one was good out on the track. It was, it was one of the best. And Honda essentially took everything about the old one and just sharpened it. It didn't really need to be sharpened, but they did it. And this is definitely still up there for the title of king of hot hatches <laughs> so a few years ago when i first got behind the wheel of the fk8 generation civic type r i basically fell in love with it and i called it the king of hot hatches because it had just an ideal blend of ride and handling the power that it made from the two liter turbo engine was just immense and it really was kind of the perfect hot hatch in so many ways aside from the fact that it was lacking all-wheel drive. So after spending some time in the all-new FL5 generation Type R, Honda has essentially taken everything that we like of the first one and improved it. We've got better steering, we've got better handling, we've got more power under the hood, and we've got a design that is far more mature. Now while I admit looks are subjective, I do think that most people are going to really like the way the Type R looks, especially once you see it in person. It doesn't look so great in pictures, but seeing it out in the real world, spending some time with this vehicle out on the track, and spending some time with the upgraded interior with those revised seats, it's just, for me, the whole package. Now, only time will tell if the Type R is going to remain the king of hot hatches. I truly need to spend a little bit more time with this vehicle and the GR Corolla and Golf R to truly figure that out. But I have to say, the new Type R is still an enticing proposition, and really what it's gonna come down to is the price, because the old Type R was a little bit cheaper versus this model. Everything's kind of getting more expensive, but now the new Type R is going to start at 42895 That represents about, I want to say around nine grand more versus the original 2017 Type R. Now, of course, that was six years ago. In all reality, this is about $4,000 more than the prior generation. So this model here with the championship white paint um, and the destination charge stickers for 44,385. That's right, we live in a world where a Civic is now $45,000. However, if you compare this directly with the GR Corolla Circuit Edition and the Volkswagen Golf R, the Type R is right around the same price range, although it is still cheaper versus the Volkswagen. It is still lacking all wheel drive, but as you guys saw from the performance, it's not really needed unless you truly need the all weather capability. Well, with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the all new 2023 Civic Type R. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.